Microsoft does make it easy to import your Google search campaigns into their platform. But even if you're just importing their campaigns and then leaving things as is, you're not fully completing your Microsoft Ads search campaign setup. There are several ad extensions that Microsoft has that Google doesn't. So in this video, I want to show you what those ad extensions are so you can go back in your campaigns to make sure you're fully completing your campaign setup and testing out these ad extensions, which could improve performance. For this video, I do want to try to show you actual examples of what these extensions look like on Bing. But for a few, I might just have to show you examples directly from Microsoft because they're less common and harder to find in the wild. I will admit, I'm going to start off with a cheap one, and that's going to be your site link extensions. I know. Right off the bat, I said it was cheap. Yes, site links are available in Google. It is probably the most common extension. However, there is a difference between the two. What I'm highlighting right here is the entire ad. You will notice there are eight site links in this ad. So while the extension itself isn't different between the two platforms, the quantity of site links you get is different. So with Google on a desktop, you do need at least two site links, but only up to six can show. The potential component of up to eight site links for Google is only available on mobile. And if it does go up to eight, they will appear in a carousel style format. But we can clearly see in this ad example, Microsoft allows more site links to show up for a desktop device than Google does. I'll admit I even get in the habit on Google to set up at least four. A lot of times I leave it at four. So if you're importing campaigns like that with very minimal or the bare minimum amount of site links, you'll want to go back into your Microsoft campaigns, or even if it applies at the account level, and start adding a lot more variety that makes sense. Microsoft even tells you to try to add up to 20 per campaign. Okay, so let's be done with the cheap ones. Let me pull up an actual extension that is completely unique to Microsoft. Okay, I typed in main hotels in the Bing search, but if we scroll down, we see a few ads have little call to action buttons next to them. These are called action extensions and they are available at the account, campaign, and ad group levels. They are clickable and you can make them a different URL than your actual final URL. This extension is available in all Bing markets. However, all of the options that we get for action extensions may not be available in every language just due to the character accounts. I'm going to provide a link within the video description. This is from Microsoft's help page about action extensions. Heads up right away, the link will automatically download a file to your device. It's not gonna to go to a specific page, but it will show you, and I'm gonna open this up, every single action extension option. And we see a few read not supported. Again, that's due to the character limits. So if you're running several campaigns in different languages, you wanna start adding call to action extension buttons, you can click on the link. We have seen a little bit higher click the rates when this extension is added, and we add several action extensions at whatever level that we're implementing them for, just so we can test out different messages, potentially different landing pages, to see what the user is comfortable doing at different intent levels of the search process. The next option is going to be review extensions. These are not seller ratings. These are not merchant ratings. Those are automated extensions. I'll bring those up again a little bit later, but I'm highlighting this section right here. You can put third-party reviews into your search ads. I know what you're saying. It's like, didn't Google have this extension? Yes, they did, but they got rid of it years ago. You can no longer create this extension within Google, but if you did run it whenever it was available years ago, you can go back and still look at historical performance for your review extensions in Google. This is available in all Bing markets, except for China. And sometimes this extension can be a little bit harder to get approved because you can't just really use any website and it's up to Microsoft's discretion. They want reliable, trusted sources. It can't just be from your friend's blog or anything like that. Those types of review extensions will get rejected. Get my mouse here. The ad copy that you use for your review extension must be present on the landing page that you use. So it says stellar choice for taxpayers. Let's click on it. Sorry, TurboTax. The user will be sent to the third party site where they can look at the information and find the review. Just heading back to the page and look at they also have an action extension too. You also cannot use your own employee reviews, any known influencers that you partner with, all that sort of thing. It's supposed to be true third party and you're supposed to get consent before you use it. It's all part of their review extension policies, but you probably realize people aren't gonna do that. So yes, I did click on it. This ad will be charged and there may be some hesitation that you're gonna be charged to send people to a different website. 
not yours. The main goal of this extension is to build trust, making the user feel confident that you are the right choice within their buying decision. So sending them to a third party site can make the user feel a lot comfortable if they see positive reviews, good testimonials, and other third party sources backing up your products. You'll admit this is one that we typically don't use a ton, but if you do have a longer sales cycle and you need to build more confidence, it could be something worth testing. This next extension that's unique to Microsoft is a little bit harder to detect. Let's look at this cold search ad that's at the top result. This line right here that I'm highlighting is the unique extension. These are filter link extensions. If they look familiar, they should. Filter link extensions are like a combination of structured snippets and site link extensions. Because if you're using structured snippets, you cannot add a link to them. But for this example, which is a department store, notice how I typed in Adidas shoes, but that search is generic. They don't know if I'm an adult or a kid, if I'm looking for an adult or a kid, potentially a gender, a style of shoe, Kohl's doesn't know. So with these generic searches, adding in filter and link extensions can help categorize it. Notice how the header is in bold, so it does stand out a little bit more, but also send me potentially to the proper page. Now, right under the filter link extensions, those are the actual site link extensions. Now with filter link extensions, there are specific headers. You can't create your own custom one, just like structured snippets. Now retail is gonna be one of the most common ones to use this type of extension, but they have other options for courses, service breakdowns, there are rates, degree programs, deals, neighborhoods, specific tools, show times, a lot more. So while structured snippets can be helpful, these provide a little bit more action and sending users to your website. So if you're only using structured snippets, definitely recommend to check out filtered link extensions to see if they can be more valuable for your Microsoft search campaigns. Now, unfortunately for these next two, I couldn't find an example quick enough. So we're gonna have to go through some made up examples within a Microsoft ads account. And the next one is gonna be flyer extensions. If you have weekly ads, any circulars, anything like that, and you wanna promote it online too, you can create an extension for it. You will have to upload an image. If someone hovers over it next to the text ad, there will be a little pop-up that tells the user to view the flyer. If they click on it, they will be taken to the URL where the flyer lives on your website. If I click edit, I will show you because the user will not download a PDF directly from the ad. You will need to provide it. The name is purely just to name the extension. You can name it pretty much whatever you want and schedule it like normal. Now, if you have a Merchant Center account, you can create flyer sponsored ads, but those are separate dedicated ads. It's not an extension. You must have shopping campaigns created to run dedicated flyer ads, but for just a simple text ad, perfect for the brand name, there are a lot of search queries out there for people looking for the weekly ads or flat out asking for the flyer. Capitalize on those searches and show them what they're looking for. As you're going through the image, they do let you know what the specs are. You cannot have any watermarks or anything on them either. So it's easy enough just to find exactly what you need to get this extension running. I do talk more about flyer extensions in this specific video here. For this next one, I am gonna cheat again a little bit because I wanna talk about video extensions. And this right here is not a video extension. This is an image extension. But if this were a video extension, this is where it would live within the search ad. There would be a small thumbnail preview. If a user clicked on it, this would expand and the user can watch the video with an additional call to action to go to the website. If I actually pull it up within Microsoft, you see your video needs to be six seconds to two minutes. You need a thumbnail. It's not gonna be like YouTube where it pulls it directly from the video. You have to provide one. There will be display text. This is when the user hovers over the thumbnail, a short little message there to entice them to want to watch the video. And then the action text and URL from when they actually are watching the video, what do you wanna to say to have them go to the website? Very similar to the action extensions. Any views on your video here will be shown within the view columns available now within Microsoft, because you can run video ads with the audience network too. And any click or view of the video is the same as a click on your ad. While we have added these to many client accounts, the impression share is pretty low. Doesn't seem like they get served a ton. But if we have a video that makes sense with specific campaigns or ad groups, we will still add it. Now I understand Google has related video extensions. Those don't really count because those are for video campaigns and you're encouraging users to watch more videos on YouTube. So while they are both video extensions, they still are technically different. I understand you may be paying a little bit more for engagement, but this is still a decent combination of showcasing your products, building trust, maybe building some urgency. Hopefully you're showcasing your product well enough that they want it more, 
but you're still giving them another call to action extension where they can go to the website. So it's not just full engagement or branding. You can still drive traffic from these extensions. The last part I want to mention is automated extensions within Microsoft. We're in the ads and extensions section and you can click on this specific tab here. Just like Google, Microsoft has automated extensions as well. And what we see on the screen right now is just for one particular client. These are not all of the automated extensions that could appear. However, Microsoft does have several automated extensions that Google does not have. And it's in the name, it's automated. Microsoft is going to automatically add these to your search ads unless you tell Microsoft not to. So if you're interested in learning about what Microsoft's automated extensions are and how you can turn them off for your search ads, you can watch this video here. But hopefully this video gave you some insights on the unique extensions that Microsoft has that Google doesn't. Over time, we've seen both of the channels adopt some of the extensions, so there could be some catch up, but for the most part, I feel some of these are gonna remain separate to the platforms. Hopefully you're always testing out your ads, but remember your extensions are a part of your ads. So if you're simply just importing exactly what you have in Google, you're missing out on fully testing out certain features that could potentially make your ads a lot better and more appealing to your target audience. If you have any other questions on Microsoft's ad extensions, please let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the super thanks button.